All right, guys, what's going on? I'm here with Brian, and then today I'm just gonna ask him a question that I've always had that I kind of know, but it would be nice to get an explicit answer. Uh, transitioning uh, from standing to the ground using bailout techniques, specifically tomanage, right? Because I've worked out with Brian for a very long time, and if you don't know, uh, check out his YouTube channel. I'm gonna link it down below. Go subscribe. He has tons of good Nawaza stuff. Um, yeah, so we're gonna go right into it, right? So dominant position usually, right? If you're winning in judo. Boom, right, I'm gonna start unloading and attacking. So the person who knows better is gonna to transition to the ground going into Tomonage. So let's talk a little bit about the transition and different options. Right off the bat, when you go for the bailout attack, right, you've escaped danger, right, you're doing judo against a judo guy. Right. Go Tomonage, what happens next? Well, you know, a lot of jujitsu people are nervous about standing up, and so the ground is a safe haven, and they go mm -hmm. to sit right down and we're always big fans of not just sitting to guard or pulling guard, yeah. so, you know, in the hopes that you end up in a neutral position or at least you're out of danger. Yeah. You know, um, it's much better to start with an advantage once you land on the ground. So, as best as you can set up a proactive response, the better it is. You know, you don't want to be mm -hmm. reactive where you sit down and you feel like, oh, at least I'm here because it's in that moment that the guy on top smashes your knees together, yeah. starts to pass, blows right past your guard, or you, you end up not getting them down and you're in a struggle. So um, off of Tomoy, uh, because you do have the ability to post on the leg and regulate distance, already you have some advantages there, and it's just more about taking, taking advantage of those advantages, if you will. So, um, right left? Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I think for, for jujitsu people who are not doing judo a lot, mm -hmm. I think, this grip here where we're um, I got to like matched can be very difficult to manage because you know learning and I'm sure you'll go through this a little bit later on but like the like learning to deal with grips here can be yeah, it's a whole thing, complicated yeah. yeah so whenever we can get a position where we're open and on one side like this you know kick out to position like this it gives us more space to fall into for the uh, for the tomoy which means that we get a little bit more momentum going onto the ground and also leads us to a little bit, uh, you know, a few more options. Okay, so we'll match this way where we're partners gripping left, we're gonna grip right, we're gonna take an underclass grip like so. You can expect probably your partner will have a sleeve grip, and then you're gonna step inside. Now, our post leg for this version is gonna be our outside leg. We're gonna step our inside foot like so, and then we're gonna put our foot here on our partner's hip. The idea, of course, would be to use this momentum to bring our partner over the top and start to settle them down. But it's very common, as you know, that you sit down and your head is so far away from your partner, you get this super powerful reaction, your partner's pulling away, now you're pushing against their hip, they're, they're, they're uh, resisting, you're pulling, and you're just kind of stuck here. So one of our favorite responses is to take this outside leg and pommel it directly behind our partner's ankle. Okay, another good target is our partner's knee, either of these are good. We'll continue to hold the sleeve, if you can, drop down to the ankle, this is even better. And now you have the perfect setup for a tripod sweep. It's one of the most basic sweeps that you know, there is in jiu-jitsu. It's one of the first things that people learn. And now from here, we simply push with our leg. We're gonna draw our partner's toe, uh, foot forward in the direction the toes are pointing, and we're gonna settle our partner down here. Now, we take the inside position, so if he were to go to lock his guard, he finds that this leg is over the top, and now we're in a position where we can start to pass proactively. So. Again, we, we match our partner's lead such that they have their left side forward, we have our right side forward, or vice versa, Kenkiatsu position, we go underneath, take a two-on-one grip and clasp here. Partner takes the sleeve, we take the sleeve. Now our intention is, in this case, Yoko Tomoe. We step the leg to the inside, and we're gonna put our foot on our partner's hip. But as we go, we feel like oh, our head is so far back and our partner is resisting. We're gonna drop a hand here, we're gonna take this outside leg pommelet behind our partner's knee, push and extend, and simply settle our partner down. Now from here we come up. Just a word of warning as you're coming up, you have this extended arm, so you wanna make sure that you're not going right into your partner's triangle here. The way that we monitor that is by keeping our elbow and our knee connected, so as he goes to throw the legs, we have that connection point, and now we can begin to work to pass our partner's guard. So this is one of my favorite ways of, of dealing with someone who's giving a lot of resistance nice. from Tumonagi. Sometimes when I go for Tomodage or when someone goes for Tomodage, right, they take that lead leg and posture up really mm -hmm. tight. Like, do you ever just go right into a Della Hiva or Shin to Shin? Yes, you can do both nice. of those things. Those are good options. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I learned this from you, mm -hmm. but, you know, most of these sacrifice throws, Tomoe, uh, Sumi, 
They rely on your partner's posture being bent forward slightly. Mm -hmm. So if you're paired with somebody and they're both upright, yes. it can be difficult even if Tomoy is your, your, you know, your, uh, uh, your, yeah, yeah. your favorite technique, your favorite throw, it can be difficult, you know, like if we're pat here and you're, you're postured up, I may have a great, uh, a great uh, uh, Tomoy, uh, but it's going to be difficult to hit. So if I do feel like I want to go down to the ground, a lot of times this is where we'll look to post a leg and then move to uh, De La Hiva or Shin to Shin. So an example of this from Kenkiyatsu might be posting the leg and going proactively either to the tripod or moving this leg to the outside so that we have a De La Hiva and now we can begin to off balance our partner. So nice. Yeah. So once again, so we're gripping. We take our control here, we go to step, and we feel like we're getting a lot of resistance. We'll take the outside foot and post to extend so that the base goes wide. We'll slip our leg off the hip. Initially, we were trying to pull our partner out this way. We're simply gonna allow this leg to come through and grapevine so the shoelaces touch the inside of our partner's thigh. Now, from here, we have the ability to either work for sweeps like the Barambolo, where we knock our partner down, or we've got other sorts of back exposure here that we can start to go for. So that's one answer. Nice. And then the other answer is, sometimes you find yourself where you can't do that and you have yeah. to go shin to shin. So we're gripping, we've got our control, we're stepping, and we feel like, oh, if you notice here, my knee is on the inside position, it's going to be a long way to try to get my leg all the way around the corner. So when this happens here, a lot of times we'll either favor a grip, like a hook underneath inside like this, or if you're really backing away here, we'll sit up and we'll join our shin to our partner's shin. Mm -hmm. Now from here, we have the ability to control our partner either just with our arm or, as is popular in jiu-jitsu a lot of times, using the lapel to wrap, and we can look at this later on, start to off-balance our partner, and then from here, we have the ability to transition either to sweeps or we can return to our feet. We can also take the leg out from here and begin to off-balance our partner. There are just so many different ways to manage it. The one thing that I will say is the cardinal sin of sitting to guard mm. is there being no contact at all with your partner. Yeah. You know, if you don't have any contact at all, you feel like you're just kind of swimming out there. So you should always have a backup plan. It's a great question to ask about a toy. Nice. So, fail to manage, tripod sweep, de la hiva, shin to shin. Right? If you could mix those three together, right, depending on my reaction, hit either which one or the other, that'd be really advantageous, right? Dave? Exactly, and then you yeah. can sprinkle in a little bit of ashigurami. Nice. You know, always yeah, a good yeah. idea to try to attack sure. the legs. Yeah, because yeah, I'm always preaching to the jiu-jitsu guys, like, don't just pull guard, right? It's such a waste, right? So if you're going to pull guard anyway, go for tomanage, you know, and if you can do one of the three, right? And the three reactions are from leaning back, it's the tripod, mm -hmm. right? And then if your foot's on the inside, go shin to shin, foot's on the outside, the lahiva, and if you have immediate system uh, systematic attacks from there, then you're in a good it's, place. It's right? very, yeah, it's very hard, you know, because your partner is on the, they're on the defensive, just like in judo, you have yeah. some kazushi, some all balancing, and the person's so busy reacting, not yeah. getting knocked down, that it opens up all these other attacks. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Good. Post. Pleasure. Post. <coughs>